right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here and joining us for another session with the Professional Choral Collective. If this is the first time you've been with us, uh, this is the time where we're looking to positivity and trying to figure out the best ways for us to move forward with whatever uh, situation we're presented with in the fall. So if you've been to some of our previous sessions, most of them have been entitled work sessions where we get together in small groups and we try to create uh, lessons, ideas, and strategies to move forward. I decided that this one would take a little bit of a different look because I have two wonderful friends who I saw were offering some uh, exceptional tools that I think would be really helpful to you as you begin your work in the fall. Before we get started, I just want to lay down a few um, a few uh, guidelines for the way we work together. First of all, my name is Derek Fox. If you don't know me, I see a lot of familiar faces in there and here and some new ones here at the University of Nebraska Omaha. And this entire thing was created for the purposes of, again, helping us figure out how to put our heads together and use the tools that we possess to be able to change the narrative or guide the narrative, at least around what it is we can do uh, whenever we are able to return in the fall in whatever situation your community decides is best for you. So um, I want to also remind you that this session is going to be recorded. So if you're someone who does not want your face to be seen on social media for whatever reason, I mean, I don't, some of you may be in witness protection. If you're a choir director, probably not because everybody knows who you are. Um, but I just want to give you the opportunity to turn your screen off if you'd like to not be plastered across social media or um, if you didn't have a chance to do your hair like I did mine tonight. Um, as we move forward, there are going to be opportunities for questions. So if you could keep the chat clear of any, you know, any kind of pleasantries, if you have a question as one of our presenters are talking, I'll be the one filtering through those questions to offer up to Jim and Elaine. And so if we can keep the chat as clear as possible or look before you post a question to be sure that someone else hasn't already posed that question, because we'll have a very short amount of time for Jim or Elaine to answer questions. And then you'll have some information to follow up with them um, once this is over. So again, try to keep that chat clear, except for questions, and then be sure that someone else hasn't already posted that question um, before you before you post a question. These two folks are very special people in our profession, and I'm sure you know them. Um, and if you don't know them, you're going to get to know of very much tonight why I decided to, to call upon them to do this. They are mission focused. They are focused on helping us help our students um, and the, the, um, the creativity that they've employed during this time where we all need some creativity has just been fascinating. So I'm gonna do a lot of facilitating and I'm gonna let them talk and continue to manage the number of people that are waiting to get in here. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to, like he needs my introduction, Jim Papoulis, who's gonna uh, talk to you about some of the ideas that he's gonna be offering in the fall to help you deliver your core curriculum uh, in the best way that you can in order to help your students have a fulfilling experience in the fall. So I will turn it over to Jim Papoulis. Okay, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me? Raise your hands if you can hear me. Make sure I'm on. Okay, correctly, good. Anyway, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I, uh, I, I do a lot of traveling and I work with so many different choir directors, so I'm always thrilled to be in front of choir directors and in front of choirs. Um, I just want to jump right into it. So uh, a, a cornerstone of my work is uh, I've been doing a lot of songwriting workshops. I've been doing about 20 of these a year for the past 10 years or so, and where I go into choirs and I, I meet with your choir for maybe two or three times and we create a song together from scratch. I record it, I produce it. A lot of times we get it published and it's, it's uh, hopefully a very empowering experience for them and an amazing opportunity for me as a composer to hear what these people are, what, what these young people are actually thinking about. Needless to say, the time right now is sort of an unbelievable time as we all know, we're living through history. And these young people, I, I mean, I, I just can't imagine what they're going through. So I've been trying to learn. So on March 26th, um, I offered a songwriting workshop every single week. It was international. We acquired from many different states and many different countries. And the, 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 the quality of the work that came out of there was so moving to me. And I'm going to share a little bit of, of that with you a little bit later. Um, it was so moving to me. And I thought, oh, my gosh. So I, I, I played it for my publisher. And they said, this is just incredible. We have to publish it. So we're, we're publishing the first sort of trilogy, the first three. That was the, the first week of COVID. And then the, 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 they were out of school the second and the third. Um, so songwriting workshops to me are um, an incredible way to get to know your students. And also it's something you can do without singing. Because I was thinking to myself, if I were a choir director and I couldn't have a choir, 
you know, everyone jumped into their choir and they did their hello and their, their music theory and all that. But then after a few weeks, they were, they were kind of scrambling for what to do. So I'm sure you found many innovative things to do with your choir. Um, so I, I, I started doing songwriting workshops with, as I say, it was open. And then now I've been doing them individually with choirs. And next fall, I'm going to be doing quite a few of them virtually. Um, and it basically, we have a 90-minute session. We're going to have a little mini songwriting workshop with you. Uh, and we're going to create a little song together. I'll show you how the process works. Um, but um, it's, it's very simple, of course, in the sense I'm sure you've all done your virtual choirs and everyone sings into their, you know, phone and they send you the, the, uh, the material and you try to line it up. And I know it's been a, a, a challenging, um, uh, a challenging uh, feat for, for a lot of people. But um, it, how many of you, by the way, have done the, the audio lineup yourself on a virtual choir? Can you raise your hand? Just a couple, not too many. Okay. Because uh, it's something that you kind of have to learn how to do. But once you get used to it, it's, it's uh, Rebecca Salzman is, is laughing there. So I can tell you spent a lot of hours doing that. Um, so so it's kind of a, um, a magical, uh, doing it on Zoom to me has become, has opened up new dimensions for me because of the chat feature. That's the main thing. And I'm going to ask you to use the chat feature once we start working on the song. Um, so what happens is a lot of the, the, I basically let them feel comfortable with me so they feel like they're in a safe space. Um, and then as we're writing, as we're thinking about ideas, I have found that a lot of students will be much more willing to write something in a chat than they will to actually speak it out in front of me or even on a Zoom call. Once they get to know me, they do feel comfortable. But I have uh, about 30 pages of chats from each songwriting workshop that, I, that I've done. And it is an entire book. It's a wealth of information for me. I could write probably a hundred songs based on, I mean, I'm looking, I'm gonna share a little bit of that with you, uh, but it's just absolutely incredible. So the, so the, the concept is, um, you know, write a song from scratch, ask them about what they wanna sing about, because I think that I work with a lot of choirs, I work with a lot of artists, and I think it's very important that they feel that they are connected to the piece. And the only way that I can, absolutely make sure that that's true is that if they contribute to writing the piece. So it's really kind of an incredible um, opportunity for me as a composer and also for the children, uh, the youth, uh, to, to be able to write a song like that. So what do we do now? Now that I can, I've, I've had many, you know, obviously all my concerts are canceled just like everyone. And I've had 20 or 30 songwriting workshops canceled. So I'm starting to do a lot of these virtual ones. And it's basically a 90 minute session. And then we can follow up the next week and I send a track, I send learning tracks, they, re they send me in all the recordings, and then I send, them out a send you out a produced track with a PDF of the score. It's kind of empowering for everybody. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But um, one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm doing now, and, and is I, I was asking, I was talking with, a, with a, a number of different directors a couple of weeks ago, and I said, tell me your ideal world. If you could have anything for next fall, what would that be? And they said, well, I mean, because I physically, Jim Papoulos can only do so many. I mean, I can do a lot of them, but I can't do thousands of them. But, but I, I, they said, can you offer us some kind of a sort of a, 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 a syllabus of sorts for like a six week program where, where you can write a song together? Uh, and, and then one guy said, well, yeah, but I don't know anything about writing a song. So I said, okay, well, what would you want? And we brainstormed a little bit and I would, I'm, I'm gonna share this with you. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a series of, I'm, I'm doing 12 songs with no melody and no refrain, no nothing. It's gonna be 12 songs that's gonna have uh, a MIDI file um, that so you can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can change the key. Um, but they're gonna be interesting, like, they aren't gonna be like blues songs, like a lot of these songwriting kind of song the programs, they have like a blues thing. And I, I'm trying to write some interesting chords that they might feel, that, that, that they don't feel that's corny, that they feel like they can really come on, really develop an idea with it. So, um, I'm going to do 12 different styles, maybe one in you know, varying styles, some ballads, some up-tempo, some cool R&B, funky ones, some, some rock ones, some interesting ones. And then you'll be able to take those if, you're, if, if you decide to do it and write a song, write a melody on top of that. And then you can record that song and, and I'm going to have a little uh, detail, um, you know, a little uh, syllabus as to how, how to go about doing that. So it's basically going to be a MIDI file and, and um, and, and also audio files of like the bass, the drums, I'm gonna produce the track and have gem bass, bass and piano. And then you can take each individual track and layer them in as you want. Who here, um, I, I'm just, I would like to just educate me a little bit. What is the format that you use? Do you have, do you import MIDI files? Do you use Logic? Do you use, can someone tell me what they use? Just, just 
raise your hand and, 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 and tell me what, what is your format? I'm just curious what you use as a, as a teacher. Can someone, can someone raise their hand and just give me an answer? Rebecca Salzman, go for it. So I've been using logic all semester and that's been really great. You do have logic. Uh, uh, does anyone else have logic? Raise your hand if you have logic. I don't think it's that popular in that. You, so you sound like you're a little bit advanced. How about someone else? What is, um, what is, what is another program that you use? Do you, have, do, you, do you use any programs? Raise your hand if you have some kind of an audio program where you use, if you haven't even done that yet. Laura White, what do you use? Um, I use different things like NoteFlight to record the background kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, I just use Audacity. Okay. Right. So, so it's pretty easy. So most people have, I mean, GarageBand or anything, you can just drag in all the tracks and go from there. Um, and then um, I, I have some pretty detailed um, instructions on how to do the recording. It's pretty simple, but you play it on your computer and you record it on your iPhone or whatever. And so you just get that and then you mix it all together. And it's very, very simple. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you just a little bit of the first, just a little snippet of the first three songs. Now, once again, these are songs from scratch. Um, these are songs that, um, that, that we, we had choirs, I think we had 20 states, we had Brazil, we had Norway, we had uh, Spain, we had many, and they're all 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th graders. None, none of them knew each other. And it was an amazing experience to, to ask them these questions. And I have a certain series of questions that I asked them, you know, and, and I'm going to ask those to you in a minute when we do our little mini songwriting workshop. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen for a minute, and I'm going to show you... Um, for example, I'm just going to show you the beginning. Can you, can you all see that screen? Turn to each other. So I'm just going to, uh, this was written on, let's see, March 26th. This is the first one. So I'm just going to go up to the hook. But if you look, I mean, these lyrics are just incredible. So I'm going to, I'm going to play and, and you're going to hear it. Here we go. Hopefully you'll hear it. to me also is what has happened in the world since then has amplified so great. The songwriting workshops that I've done in the last two weeks uh, obviously have been towards this, this seismic shift in society, but I just wanted you to get to see. So these are words, and I, I'm not going to share the chat with you right now because I know we're time crunched a little bit, but the words, I literally just, just I will print out the words from the chat and the, and the lyrics just pop off the page, and most of the time we've, we've finished them all. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm just going to show you very quickly um, uh, a little bit. Now, the next, the next week, they wanted to write about, about being a warrior of love, which I thought was pretty, pretty cool, because I've certainly never written a song called Warrior of Love. But I'm just going to, say, I'm just going to play just the beginning of that, so you can, you, can, you, can, uh, you can hear that. Okay, so here it is. They wanted like a, a beat that was kind of a, 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 like a big drum beat, and, and here it is, just so you can hear it. Our time, I will be a warrior of love. I 
healing. This is three weeks into the pandemic. Um, and this is called Let This Be a Time of Healing, which I think is absolutely just beautiful. I'm just going to get to that. Um, here we go. I'll just I'll play you a tiny bit. This was uh, April 9th. So so here we go on, on this. I'll just send you play you a minute of that and then we can ask some questions about it. Yeah, here we go. Drowning in the darkness, which I So I just wanted to give you a little taste of, of these incredible lyrics that these that these kids wrote like during this uh, during this time. Um, so what I'd like to do is I would like to take a couple of minutes and um, do a little songwriting workshop with you. Okay. So where are you open? Are you game to do this? Now you are all mostly directors of elementary, middle, high school, college. Is that right? I guess that that's about it. Um, um, so I, I'm asking you to now, once again, you can, you can write it in the chat if, if you, you know, but I'm going to ask you a few questions and I would love it if, you, if I could hear your voices saying that or whatever, but um, uh, because I would like to hear some of your voices and I'm just going to write down some ideas and we're going to come up with a little hook of something. I have no idea what it's going to be. And I always like to, um, whenever I do a songwriting workshop, I always do this to the students and they, they are very confused. I said, by the way, the song that we're going to write, I happen to have right here with me and they, and they kind of look like that. And then I show them this, this on the screen. I said, there it is. Okay. Obviously, it's a blank sheet of paper. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions. Just as teachers, as, as directors, um, what is your biggest fear and your biggest concern right now? Just raise your hand and just go for it. Just, just tell me. Raise your hand and go for it. Anybody? Brian, Brian, where are you from, Brian? I'm from uh, upstate New York, Rochester. Okay. Biggest fear is uh, not being together um, in person. Not being together, meaning that, that you might not, you're talking about your fear of what might, I got you, okay. With your choir we're talking about or just in general, okay. Okay. What is your other biggest fear for next year? Anybody else? We heard isolation. Um, we see in the chat getting sick, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, if there were a question you were going to pose, wondering something, what would that be? What would that question be? Write it in the chat or say it. Will you stay with us? Will you what? Will you stay with us or will you leave? Does, you meaning will you die or not? Tell me, give, you go a little deeper into that statement. If, if choir is not in person, will it still be something you take or will you walk away? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, in other words, will you stay in the choir? Is that what you mean? Right. Okay, I got you. How do we build our sense of community? Will we lose our sense of family? Got it. Okay. Someone in the chat said, when will this be over? Uh-huh. How, how, how will we heal? Got it. That's, these are good. Okay. Now, so typically, when, when I write with, with a group like this, we talk about this. We, we, I ask them a lot of questions. I ask them, you know, what is their biggest concern about the world? And obviously, this is a very interesting time right now, but I think you as directors, let's focus in on that right now. So we would have to decide on what kind of a, I mean, so far the, the, the ideas that I'm getting here, it's not gonna be a regular one, four, five-y kind of song with major chords, I'm guessing, right? It, it needs to be a little spicier than that. Would you agree with the thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes. So I'm, I'm gonna pick a key. I have no idea what key I'm gonna be in. Um, can you hear me? 
you, can you hear that piano? Everybody can you hear the piano? Okay, so I'm thinking something a little bit kind of weird in the beginning. I don't know, does that, does that sound right? Um, and, and I'm looking for a refrain. So maybe the, the verse might be, can anyone name a chord they want me to start with? What kind of a chord? Like a, yeah. a Brian, a Brian, go ahead. F minor, F minor, F minor seven. seven. F minor seven. Something like that, right, right? Fancy. All right, I like that. And then, so I like keeping a, a little weird kind of a mood like that. And then maybe, you know, you want to start with a low kind of uh, a phrase or start on a higher phrase? You want to start low and rise or what? Anybody, tell me. Just go for it. Ryan. Is that Ryan from Ithaca? Is that you? How are you? Okay. Um, so, so starting lower and then rising a little bit. Is that right? So, you know, and then think about the first word of a song. You're creating this mood, right? Maybe the mood would be, you know, maybe something like there, like, um, give me a first line. Give me, give me a first line of a song. Anybody, go for it. Someone's got to have one. How Tyler, long will the music one? be silent? Say it again, Marjorie. How long will the music be silent? Something kind of weird like a up. Something, something in it. Something out. I like that. All right, so that's a good line. What's the second line? How long will the music be silent? I love it. In the okay. chat, Emrick says, when will we know? Emrick D, hey Emrick, and the chat says, when will we know? Um. All right, something, something in that weird kind of a thing. All right, now the refrain is gonna be what? I'm gonna take, was it Rebecca's idea as, um, will, we, will, we, will you stay with us? Or will you sing with us, or what? What? Give me a, give me a, give me a question. What? Which is the title of the song? Be. We'll get it real quickly. Title of the song would be what? After, um, and I love that first line, Marjorie. That's a beautiful first line. Um, and let me tell, tell it to me again, so I can write it down because I forgot it. When will the music be silent? What did you say exactly? Your actual words. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Um, oh, help someone. Yes, Brian. She said, how long will the music be silent? Thank you. <laughs> how long will the music be silent? That's a great, that's a great opening to a song. Okay, beautiful. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna, so then maybe we can, we can rise something there, something there, something there, to the something there, to the something there, to the, to the big kind of a refrain, but I think the refrain should probably be in a, in a, in a in still in a minor key or, or, or in a major key, what do you think? Someone's going to go to D flat major in the chat. D flat major. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. Okay. So I'm thinking that, but, um, um, so maybe I'm, I'm going to, this, a question you're posing to me is when will we, what did you say? Will we, uh, who said that? Rebecca, what did you say? Do you remember? When will we know? I think it was, when will we know? When will we know? So, so, I'm, I'm assuming maybe we could do some kind of a jump on it. So, when, when will we know, buddy? Da? Well, we know what? What would be, fill that blank in, fill that phrase in there. Anybody? Where do we go from here? Where, where, uh, where do we go from here? Okay. Is that it? say where, where will we go from here to that major chord there whoever wanted that major chord that d flat major chord there okay what what um so okay so now what i would do is i would put i think maybe it would need some kind of a drum kind of a beat on that so i, I would i would just put in a uh you know, you know Uh, 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 um, here and I like 
Whoever said go to a major chord, I like that idea because that feels good. It lifts it out of there, okay? So typically what would happen in the songwriting workshop is we're going to create the narrative. We're going to create the narrative first, um, and then we'll, we'll write. I mean, we're doing it here in 10 minutes, um, and we only have a couple more minutes left. So um, typically, um, and then what I would do is I would write it down, and then I'll send you learning tracks. I usually have my daughter sing the learning tracks for the soprano altos, and then I, I, I send learning tracks, and then we put it all together, and they send me the you know, it's, it's kind of a, an incredible process. And, and once again, as a composer, it's, it's amazing to be, able to, to, to be able to experience this. So quick question. Uh, there's just a couple, we only have a couple minutes, I know. Um, so tell me about the idea of, of the 12 templates of a MIDI file of a song and then, and then like a little syllabus, what you could do each week with that. Do you like that idea? How could I, how could I, um, how could I improve on that? So my elements are going to be a MIDI file. Who, who here could use a MIDI file? Who here uses MIDI files at all? A lot of you do MIDI files. Okay. So I'm going to send a MIDI file. I'm going to do the audio tracks, the, the bass, the drums, the keyboard. I'll produce it. With, I'll play djembe and have shaker and stuff and then have everything. Then you can write your own melodies with your choir over that, whether it's virtual or not. Are most of you going to be virtual next, next fall so far? It's still unknown, right? We don't know. We're, we're not sure. But uh, the chances of us singing in a small room with a big choir in September, I'm guessing, are relatively small, right? So, so I'm saying that, so this is, so how else could I improve that? So I'm going to give you a MIDI file. I'm going to give you a syllabus with, 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 with what to do on each of the six sessions, um, how to, how to get, go about writing the song, questions you can ask your students, and then how you lay it in and, 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 and put it in the program. Anything else? Any questions? So I know my time is just about up, Derek. Is that right? I know I only have about three more minutes. Yeah, just about three more minutes. You hit one of the questions about including some prompts or questions that students could ask. I'm just looking now in the chat. What programs are best to use for this, Jim? For what programs are best to use for what? For for, pick for, for the materials that you may send them. Should it be Finale, well, Sibelius? Well, first of all, you, you don't even have, you, you can do it in any program you want if you want to do the writing music software. But I'm talking about, so once you write the music, you can do it in Finale, you can do it in Sibelius, anything you want. But what I'm trying to give you, what I'm trying to help you with is give you a, a creative outlet where you can use and just jump right in and say, okay, on day one, we're going to talk about ideas and concepts. Then maybe we'll listen to the 12 different styles and say, you know what, that one responds to me. That's the mood that's going to respond to me, and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. um, Our other question, Jim, is will these 12 songs be available, available for purchase by the fall? So my question is cost yeah. them on this. Yeah, we're doing it right away. We're doing it. Um, I mean, I'm, I've, I've done about 10 of them. I'm doing two more next week. Um, and then it'll be like basically like a six-week or a six-session program. You can spend – two sessions on one if you want. Just once you start talking about songwriting and hearing what they want about, it's, it's, it's an incredible, I'm telling you, it's an amazing uh, opportunity as, a, as an educator to, to sit there and ask these questions. But I'm gonna give you sample questions and I'm gonna kind of lead you through how you might do that. And then you can use it on GarageBand, you can, you, can, you can just use the MIDI file or you can use the audio files when you do your final recording. All right, uh, another question we have is, um, is there a specific way you ask students to create the melodies? Yes, I have a whole system of, uh, in other words, we talk about, do we want to go from low to high? Uh, mel did you say the melodies? Yeah, the melodies. Yes, absolutely. It, it just comes out. If people are in a choir and you play and you hear a chord progression with a bass and a couple of drums, it's going to come out. And it's very interesting to see what the different melodies are. And it's obviously it's impossible to please every single person. But if you're in a group setting or on a Zoom session and you play that track, you might ask one person to say, hey, what's your melody for that, bridge, for that verse you hear over there? And make sure your range is correctly. You know, you might, whatever, whatever your voicing is, make sure every, everyone is in the correct range. It, the, 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 the creativity will just absolutely blow you away. They'll do it. They, I promise you because I've seen it. Someone asks, are, do you have any videos of you personally creating melodies? So if someone were to do this and you weren't in the space, they would have a... Um, not everybody has that brain you have, so they want to know, are there, some, uh, are there some, some ways of you modeling for them how you create your own melody? You know what? You bring up a good idea. So maybe what I'll do is I'll post on YouTube of me coming up with the melodies on a couple of different, you like, is that a good idea, you think, maybe? Yeah, I'll that that is my that? idea, 10%, 10%. Um, we have time for one, one more question, Jim. Where will these be available to purchase and download? Oh, I think they're going to be available. So I think they're going to, like, it's, they're going to sell a code 
I don't know how they're going to do it. That's I, I don't even think about the, the selling part of it. But I think that they do. You're going to get a code, and and if you have a school with multiple choirs, you only have to get one set of them. In other words, you can use them for the whole school, um, not the whole district, but each school can can have one one code, and then they can download. And I think I, I'm meeting with them. Um, tomorrow and I think we're going to have it available by the first week in August or the second week in August or something like that. Okay. Um, um, and then before we have to move on to Elaine, my final question is uh, if they wanted to engage you in coming into their classroom, what is that process like? What is the, what would that cost them? It's very simple. It's, that's just, you could just email, I would email smallvoices at gmail.com if you want to maybe put that in the chat. Um, and it, if you, you know, if you want to reach out and then they can hook up, they know my schedule and everything gotcha. better than I do. So small voices at, at gmail.com. And, and if you have any questions or suggestions after this, please keep adding them in the chat. And Derek, they're welcome to email me. Uh, I mean, okay. through my web, it's jimpapoulos at gmail.com. And I always like hearing from you, people like you on the front lines because I, I really envy what you do because you guys get to see the development of the kids. And I, 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 I applaud what you do so much. Awesome. Jim, will you check what I just put in the chat to make sure that's correct? That is correct. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Jim Papoulos, and then smallvoices at gmail.com is easy. Correct. That is correct. So you're okay. going to send me the chat. Is that correct? I sure will. I'll send you okay. the chat for everything, and then people can follow up with Jim if they have any more questions. I know this was so fast and so quick, but that's the point of it, to really kind of give you lots of snippets and ideas that make you really, really excited to follow up with Jim on some questions you may have specifically about pricing and all those kinds of things, because I don't want, um, he can discuss that with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If you would so much join me in thanking Jim for being here and just a little bit of hands, I, it would be wonderful. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of your ideas and your willingness to come share and be so open about your process with everybody. My pleasure. All right. And feel free to email me, anybody, any ideas. I'll, I, I welcome them. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, awesome. Jim. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you very much. All right, and so now in our in our final few minutes together, we're going to bring Elaine Hagenberg. Elaine, are you here yet? I am. Awesome, there she is, right there. So Elaine is going to share with us. I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, most of you all know her music; it's beautifully written. Um, and she and Jim are just, like I said, two powerful forces in our profession. And it's my pleasure to uh, bring them both to you. So I turn it over now to Elaine Hagenberg. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. It's so. Good to see so many familiar faces actually tonight. I see Evan in Florida and I see Allie and Matt and Hannah and Alyssa, I just talked to you this morning. So it's great. To, um, thank you for the invitation, Derek. And just thank you for all the work that you're doing to um, create a community where we can brainstorm and share ideas. Um, I have three things that I'd like to kind of highlight tonight. Um, if you're not familiar with me or my music, I thought I'd just give you a little brief information about me. Um, and then I have a new piece that some of you might be interested in. If you're not familiar with my writing, I think it just is a good example of kind of my style. And then at the end, I have six ideas. I have six resources that I thought that I could share with you, just some different ways that I've been brainstorming some free things that I can give to you to maybe start thinking about using in the fall. So um, just a little bit about myself. I'm an Iowa-based composer, and not everyone knows this, but before becoming a full-time composer, I was also a music educator. So I was a choir teacher, and like many of you, I was in the vocal music classroom. I taught anywhere from sixth grade choir up to high school choir, and I taught for nine years. So I feel like I will always have the heart of an educator in a way. And because of that, I really appreciate all of you, your efforts during this time. And like I said, it's so great to see you all supporting each other in this way. Um, so in telling you that I'm a music educator in the past, a lot of people like to know, well, how did you start composing? And my story is actually a little bit different than probably a lot of composers you would talk to because never did I imagine that I would be a full-time composer. I had never met a living composer and I didn't really even consider it as a career option, which is another reason I'm always excited when I get a chance to talk to high school choirs or college groups. And I can encourage them and I can say, this is an option for you and you can consider this for a career. Um, so if I look back at my life, like many of you, I always loved music. I loved singing. Um, piano was kind of the instrument where I felt most comfortable. 
And when I was in grade school, middle school, high school, of course I sang in the choirs all, all throughout till 12th grade, but usually actually I was the accompanist once I, once I got to high school. Um, and I had a wonderful high school teacher that really saw um, some potential in me and she gave me some extra opportunities. And um, I think it was through those accompanying experiences, that's when I started observing voice leading and texture. And I would also start to improvise and I would come up with my own melodies and harmonies. Um, so then I went to college, study music ed, like many of you, and I had a choral emphasis and I knew I wanted to be a teacher. This is when I feel like I really fell in love with choral music. And like many of you, I just wanted to provide those same uh, experiences to students, introduce them to the community that we could create through choral music, beautiful repertoire, and all my best friends were in choir. And so I really felt a lot of connection with the people and the singers. And like I said, I wanted to offer that to others, but how does that explain composing? So like I said, there's also a creative side to me my entire life. Um, even when I was a little girl, I loved to make up melodies and harmonies, improvisation. When I had my senior piano recital, I actually had two original compositions. And in my theory courses, which I did not actually love theory, but I really enjoyed the composition assignments that we had. So it really made sense. But if you fast forward, I did not actually start writing my musical ideas down until I was 28 years old. So like I said, I had taught vocal music, um, but I had never um, really started to try to write a choir piece. And that creativity of writing things down came out of me uh, when I was a stay-at-home mom. So imagine 28 years old, I had a two-year-old, and then I had newborn twins. So I had three children, ages two and under, and I didn't sleep for about two years. And at that time, I said, for the first time, I started to write my ideas down on paper. I just had, um, similar to what Jim showed, I had a notebook with my staves. And on the internet, then after that, I found a call for scores, a little competition, and decided maybe I'll just submit a piece. And no one would need to know. Um, I might not be any good, but I'll just write it down and I'll see what happens. And to my surprise, I was one of the winners. And do you know what I won? It was $25. But to be honest, if I hadn't completely honest, there was a $20 entry fee. So really, I just won $5. So with my big winnings, my $5, I put the kids in the back of the car, went straight to the Starbucks drive through and I celebrated with a tall white chocolate mocha. And But the real prize to me, of course, was not the $5 that I won. It was there were actual people somewhere in the country that were going to sing something that I wrote and they sent me a recording and I was just thrilled. Um, so soon after that, I took a risk and I thought, well, maybe instead of just sharing this with strangers, I will share with someone that I know. So I shared it with a local choir teacher and she said, yeah, I would like to do this on my spring concert. And I was thrilled to have a live performance that I could hear in the space real time with the singers. And every concert after that, that concert led to more concerts, which led to more concerts. And then I thought, well, then I'll get brave again. And what if I submitted this to the publisher? And uh, many months went by and eventually I heard back from a college publisher too saying, we'd like to publish your first piece. And I was so excited to have, you know, these, um, these concerts that led to published pieces. And then after that, the like similar, the, the domino effect that occurred with the concerts that happened with the publisher too. They asked for more pieces, which led to more published pieces and eventually started taking commissions and um, writing for groups that would contact me. And um, slowly it, I realized that going back to full-time teaching was not an option. I did teach for a couple years after the kids were all school aged, but with my composing deadlines and publisher deadlines and commissioning deadlines, I knew that I really had to make a decision. Even though, I, like I told you earlier, I, I really feel like I still have the heart of an educator, um, but I knew that composition allowed me to say something and it had become my passion. Um, there are so many times I struggle to find the words, but I feel like I have an opportunity to say something unique with music. And like I said, it became my passion. And I just feel so honored that I get to share my musical ideas with all of you. I get to write subjects that are deeply personal to me. I get to write from my heart, but hopefully it also speaks to all of us, our human experiences that we share. 
And then as you know, when we use our music and our voices together, we can just encourage our singers, we can encourage our audiences, we can offer beauty and we can offer hope. And um, a piece that I wanted to share with you tonight is a new piece, it's called You Do Not Walk Alone. And I think some common themes that you'll find in my music, as I said, there are oftentimes subjects that are deeply personal to me and authentic to me, but they're themes that are universal. They're themes that, that can unite us. And so there will be themes of struggle or loss, but also turning to hope and encouragement. And I have to say, I'm a sucker for a happy ending. So even if it's minor um, or dissonant, there's going to be some kind of resolution. And I like to have um, just this feeling of hope that we leave people with when we sing. So the piece that, um, I wanted to share with you, um, many of you maybe are familiar with You Do Not Walk Alone. I'm, um, excuse me, Oh Love. That is the one that probably most people are familiar with. The one that I wanted to share with tonight is You Do Not Walk Alone. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up so I can share my screen with you. And what I wanted to share was just my website. So you can actually navigate this. Um, I will share this. On your own here. Okay. How are we doing, Derek? Can you see everything okay? Perfect. Okay, so here's just the home page of my website. This is just elainehagenberg.com. And then if you go under compositions, under the new section, there's also SATB, some other feature, um, drop down features here. But just take a look under SATB. You can also get there from new. And as you scroll down, here it is, you do not walk alone. And this is an Irish blessing. So it's going to have a little bit of Celtic rhythms, a really simple melody that's memorable and singable, um, just some folk qualities. And then you'll see on the right, I like to put the texts. May you see God's light on the path ahead when the road you walk is dark. Um, and then a little bit of information in the middle about the piece and then a video down below. So I'd like to just play a little bit of this. I don't think we'll have time for all of it, but um, just give you a sample of some of my writing. Like I said, if you're not familiar with my music yet. <laughs>
So um, that shows you a little bit about that piece. And then going along with that, I wanted to share some of my resources. So I have six different resources, like I said, for you, um, hopefully maybe one, maybe all six of them could be of use to you. But if you look at the top of my website under resources, I'll go ahead and click on this. Um, I have a few different pieces now that have rehearsal discussion guides. So if this is a piece that you decide you would love to do with your singers, even if you're not singing this piece, you can have free access to this uh, three page color um, PDF guide. So your students could listen to the link that I just shared with you. They can preview for free a PDF watermarked copy, and then they can go ahead and download this link here too. And this is just um, all the information that you saw before in the three sheets, but it's bigger now here. So it has the text on the first page. Um, it has a little bit about Irish blessings and what they're used for, a little bit of history, information about me, um, the inspiration. Why do I write the pieces I write? What is my inspiration in general? And then why did I write this piece? And then here are some discussion questions. And these will get them thinking beyond just the notes. It'll have them thinking about the text and how it relates to them. And how does the text relate to the form of the piece and the texture and how our dynamics use it, used. And then um, also their specific measures and just pointing them um, to kind of get in the mind of a composer. Why would a composer make these musical decisions? Um, and then I, I tried to make this as user friendly as possible for both students and teachers. So everything's clear buttons right there. Everyone can find them. Um, I talked a little bit about Oh Love before. That is one that some of you may know. But again, there's the PDF. You can listen. Um, two other pieces that I have right now are I Will Be a Child of Peace and Music of Stillness. A uh, Song of Miriam, if you've done that one with your students, that one will be available very soon too. So that is the first free resource that I have for you that I hope um, you can take advantage of. I did a love with a choir in California right before the school year ended and they had some really good insights and thoughts and um, really good observations through these discussion guides. And you don't even need to do all 10 questions. You can just do three or four or five. And maybe when some students are in their, cl in their classroom, they can do them as a written assignment from home if you need to, or you can do this online, you can do it in person. Um, some other resources that I'd like to share are also some free samples of music because everyone likes free music. If you are like me, um, I like to take the actual octavo. I like to get samples and put it on the piano and play through it before I buy a piece. So if you are interested, I have um, seven new pieces pieces that are in the Elaine Hagenberg Choral Series. I'll lift them up so you can see them. But I am now independently publishing my concert music. Um, I'm still working with Beck and Horse Press to uh, do my, my sacred music, my church choir music through Beck and Horse. But if you are interested in some of these titles, I have a link that I'm going to drop in our chat. And Beck and Horse has also generously um, sent me some of their new titles. Um, I have the You Do Not Walk Alone, the one that we talked about right now, and it's also available in SSA. TTB will be coming shortly, um, but a new Christmas piece and two, two other new ones. So let me grab this link and I am going to, I have to stop sharing my, sharing my screen for just a minute. And if you, uh, let me cut and paste here. And then we'll be good to go. Okay. 
Oh, there we go. It happened twice. Sorry, everybody. There we go. So for free sample scores, you can just sign up with this link, send me your address, and then there are boxes you can uh, check if you are interested in SATB or just SSA, and I will be happy to send those to you free of charge. Um, another fun thing that I have for free music is one of the participants tonight is going to win free music for your entire choir. So it looks like we have 86 people here, so you'll have a 1 in 86 chance of winning music, and you might have 20 singers or you might have 100 singers, but I will send those to you um, free of charge and it's just my gift to you to kind of get you started for this school year with some new free music. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure I talked about tonight is a, free, a new virtual choir kit that is being um, sold through Beckenhorst Press. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so I can get you here via my resources. Okay, so back to my website. And if you would look under compositions now, I'm just going to take you to Oh Love. How about that? Because that is the song that I'd like to share first. Um, and that's the, the first one, the virtual choir kit that they've done. So we're gonna find Oh Love. And the same resources that we had before with the discussion guides, but this one over here has the virtual choir kit. And Beckenhorst Press has done all the legwork for starting a virtual choir. Um, they have click tracks, they have these great videos where you can see the conductor, see piano, and they have alto focus, soprano, tenor bass, and then balanced videos too. Um, and then with this kit comes MP3 files, clean files that you can sync together in the way that you choose. But maybe you have a high school student in your that can put this together for you, or if you're a church, you have an AV person that can put this together, or maybe you're really tech savvy yourself and you can make some of, some of these videos come together in an awesome way. But I even think this is a great resource, even if you're not planning to do a virtual choir, because if you have some students in the classroom, some singing from home, they can still be practicing the alto part, or they can still be practicing the tenor part. And then when they do finally all come together, they'll know their notes and be ready to, to sing together. Um, so the virtual choir, and then uh, I also wanted to talk about just briefly a special project that I'm working on for fall, and I'm not ready to release the details yet. Um, I hope to announce it in August, but I'm working on some music that is accessible for a variety of voicings and also um, a variety of choirs. So. If you would like more information on this, just visit my website. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Sorry, everybody. There we go. Um, visit my website. There's a subscription link at the bottom. Send me your information. And people who subscribe um, are the first ones to hear about when new music comes out or there are new resources for you. And I'll make sure to include you on that. And then the last thing that I wanted to offer is just Zoom meetings like this. I met with over 25 choirs last spring. So if you are interested in having me work with your choir, have more intimate time together to maybe talk about a specific piece that they're working on, or just have a Q&A time where they can ask me anything about composition or about um, my process, how I begin starting a piece or what it's like to be a full-time composer. Um, I'm happy to see if that can fit into my schedule and, um, yeah, Zoom session is the last thing. So I also, I just wanted to thank you for your time. Thank you for your positivity and the encouragement that you're showing to one another. Um, like I said, I, as a former music educator, it's just so encouraging to me to see you all supporting one another and coming together, offering these resources, these collaborative meetings that Derek's putting together for all of you to bounce ideas off of each other. And um, I think it's wonderful that we can continue to support each other in the fall. And I'm looking for even more ways that I can be of assistance to all of you. So thank you for your time and feel free to reach out if you have further questions. Awesome, Elaine. Before you, before you leave us, I want to, uh, one, share a, a comment with you from someone. You do, uh, you do Not Walk Alone was the last thing my high school chorale sang together before their school closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple questions that people have, to, uh, let's see, um, is Old Love, the virtual choir, only available for SATB or is it available for SSA too? It is available right now for SATB only. So okay. this is their very first virtual choir kit that they've put together. So I'm told that there are more coming, but this is the one that they have available first. Perfect. And then another question. Hi, Taylor. Good to see you. 
uh, is some, uh, will you be adapting any of your music for the elementary level or middle school, junior high school level in the virtual choir kit? But I guess it could be also outside of that as well. You write beautiful music and we all want it, Elaine. Oh, thank you. I, yes, so much of my music is SATB. Um, so that is another comment I've been getting more and more is, would you consider writing SAB music? I do have one piece that is just only SA, it's called Tiger. And, uh, is William Blake's text. And it's no to VC, just SA. So you could look at that one if you have middle schoolers or are looking for just a SA music. But thank you for that comment and that question because I've been getting that a lot more recently. And so I will consider to see if maybe there are some pieces that have lots of DVC or SATB. And if I can adapt those and make those more accessible for younger singers, um, maybe that's something that I can also offer to the choral community at this time. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, everybody give us another big old round of applause for Elaine Hagenberg. I'm glad you said your name so I can start saying it correctly because I was saying <laughs> Hagenberg. So thank you so much, Elaine. You were such a treasure and we appreciate you for sharing so much with us tonight. Oh, thank you, Derek. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Before we wrap up, I'd like to kind of share with you a few things for, for you as we begin to move, as we get ready to wrap up our time together. Um, you can see that we've talked about things that you can do towards the fall and uh, meet your students at various levels, whether it's on uh, virtual, virtually online, or even Elaine talked about providing things for them to practice at home. But there are also opportunities for you to do some things during the summer. And so I love seeing former students and we have one online now, Rebecca Saltzman is gonna share with you some information that you might be interested in in your students' uh, continuing their musical growth uh, uh, in July. I was gonna say next month, but that, God, that's this week, right? Yeah. Rebecca, where are you? Go for it. Hi, so my name is Rebecca Saltzman. I teach at Ramsey High School in New Jersey. Um, as we were reaching the end of the year, a bunch of my students started panicking to me about that their summer programs were being canceled and how are they gonna get ready for college and how are they gonna do this stuff? So I, um, I love your TikTok videos. Yes, I, I am on TikTok. Um, but, I got together with some fabulous colleagues in Kentucky and Rhode Island and Florida and in North Carolina. We made this online digital vocal music camp that runs the last two weeks of July. And in the camp, it's called VUDV for Voices United Digital Vocal Institute. And in the camp, they take theory and they are able to take electives like vocal pedagogy and conducting. And they're part of a digital choir every day. And they have the option to sign up for voice lessons and their special topic seminars uh, one of which is going to be done by our fearless leader, Derek Fox. So um, it's going to be a really awesome camp. We have kids, high school and college actually, signed up from about 13 different states. We'd love to get more. And we're keeping the price pretty low. There is a cost. But that being said, if you have a student who wants to do it and they don't have the financial ability, we're not turning any kids away. It's a hard time in the country as it is. So there's tons of scholarships. Just send me an email, have them fill out a scholarship form. We're going to make it work for every kid who wants to do it to do it. So that is www.vudv.com. I'm putting it in the chat. Feel free to email if you have any questions. It's going to be a really awesome program, so I hope to see some of your students. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. Um, before we before we end, I'd like to share one more thing with you, and then I'll let you go on your merry way. It has been so empower empowering and impactful, and I hope that you realize, if you haven't realized before, you are not alone. And being alone at this point is definitely a choice because we have so many ways to be connected now, even as we um, are on our virtual. So special shout out to our friends from Canada, India, and Indonesia who are joining us tonight. It's amazing that we can all be together in this fashion for the purposes of moving our students forward. In that vein, the Country Music Association Foundation has partnered with me to begin to expand this program that I created on my couch about six or seven weeks ago. Yeah, it's called Couch to Couch, Music Education. No couch to 5K for me. Um, and so what they're gonna do is they've already modeled this, they've already taken this model and expanded it. And I'm gonna put in the link for you um, a place to share with your instrumental and your elementary music education friends, because they're gonna now recreate this with elementary jazz technology, instrumental across all levels so that they can begin to create future teaching practices as well. So that is a link that you can share with your colleagues. We will have one more middle school, junior high school work session, and we will have one more high school work session to kind of 
flesh out a few more plans. I think we've kind of reached our maximum on our ideas that we can be creative about. And then I think our next step will be able to offer something around diversity inclusion, um, uh, because that's, that's gonna be an important part of what we do when we go back into the classroom as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone for being here. I appreciate you for your uh, openness. I appreciate you for participating. Uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out to me at DAF. I'll put it in chat, defox at unomaha.edu. If you need access to the, pre, the future teaching practices that are already created, email me there, and I'll make sure you get those. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, former students. <laughs> Great seeing you too, Dr. Fox. Thank you. Colleagues. Thanks, Dr. Fox. Thank you.